All right, what's going on, everybody? Uh, Sensei Lewis here with another self-defense technique based upon a real attack. In this attack, this situation took place in Canada in which a guy mistook this Latino couple as being Middle Eastern terrorists. He obviously couldn't tell the difference between Spanish and Arabic. Um, although, the, you know, some people from Latin America do have tans and perhaps could be mistaken for being from the Middle East, he still had no reason to attack them, though. See, so regardless of his thinking that they were from the Middle East or whatever, from what I saw in the video, they didn't do anything that would warrant him to attack them. So he just gets out of his car, basically, with a bat, and he starts yelling that they're ISIS, that they're terrorists. He's trying to get people, he, he, it seems like he's trying to get people to come to be on his side to further attack them, right? And then, he, and then eventually he winds up attacking them, attacking one of the, the, the father with the bat, okay? Um, and, but this goes to show you, once again, the need for self-defense because no one came to help them or to intervene on their behalf as far as we, as far as we were told from the news report. But that's the importance of self-defense because in most cases, you're going to only be able to rely on yourself and whatever skills you have or the lack of skills that you, that you don't have, you see? So this is why we stress again the need for self-defense. And this is why we teach self-defense for that purpose to give people an advantage. We, we, don't, we don't like to see people being victims you know, of, of unjust attacks or any attack, whether it's unjustified. We don't, want, we don't want to see people being victims. And so we offer these self-defense techniques. So again, this is based upon a real attack. We'll show you the footage of the attack. We better get the f*** out of here. Terrorists! 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 We got terrorists here! We got French terrorists! Hey, stay away with me. We got terrorists! Help. Terrorists! Help. We got terrorists! We got terrorists! ISIS! ISIS! We got ISIS right here! ISIS! We have ISIS! We have ISIS! ISIS right here! We have ISIS! Stay away with me. ISIS! ISIS! It's ISIS! <laughs> Stay away from me! It's ISIS! Stay away from me! ISIS! ISIS! Stay away from me! It's ISIS! Stay away from me! It's ISIS! And now that we saw the footage of the attack, let's go ahead and deal with some points that you can get from the attack. Alright, so I have my system here. Alright, so uh, the first thing is that in the full length version of the video, the guy gets out of the car with the bat. So number one, as a martial artist, right? Self-defense technician, that's the first sign that, you know, you need, that's when you have to make a decision on what you're gonna do. If you don't get the fuck out of my face right this second, give me that phone. Why are you going to give me my phone? You're under arrest. So the first thing is the guy gets out the car, right? He gets out the car with the bat. Now here they had a distance. They had plenty of time because he's just getting out of his car. So once I see the guy get out with a weapon, you should immediately start to get your distance, right? This is not about the ego. This is not about who's the tough guy, who's the better guy. You see the guy get out of his car with a weapon, and in this case a bat, you should already start making your distance. Like I said, this is not about the ego and trying to be the tough guy and who's the man and all of that. You should already start seeing your, making your way to get further away once you see the guy gets out the car with the bat. So that was the first thing. And again, let me say this too, that I'm not trying to put anybody down. I'm not trying to put the people who were attacked down. I'm actually offering some help for them or anybody else to avoid a situation like this. So I don't, I don't want anybody to misunderstand the, the motive of this video. The motive of this video is because we don't like to see people being victimized. So am I clear about that? The motive of this video and all our videos that we do based upon real attacks are because we don't like to see people victimized and we want to offer people uh, a way out, a way to avoid or defend themselves in such situations. So let's be clear about that, okay? So like I said, the first thing was when you see the guy get out the car with the bat, that's your first sign that you got to make a decision, which is what? Let's get away from this guy. He's getting out the car with a bat, okay? Now, the second thing, now if you miss that opportunity, right? If you miss that opportunity to, to, to avoid the distance with the bat, the next thing in the video is that as the guy gets out the car with the bat, he then comes up to the, to the, to the guy holding the camera, right, the guy who's going to be the victim, he comes up to him and he, he gets in close proximity. Now remember, we talk about the three-foot rule. 
right? The three foot rule is where you don't allow a, a potential threat to get within three foot, three feet of you. Because that means they're in striking distance, right? The closer I am to the person, the more striking distance and they, they have the, the, the ability to touch me. So we always talk about keeping the three foot rule. And of course, the three foot rule is when the person is empty handed, right? From what you can visibly see, they don't have any weapons at least visibly available to you to, for you to see. But his, his striking distance, he can touch you. See? Within three feet, he can touch with his legs or his hands. Okay? So we always talk about keeping the distance at least three feet so that way he's out of range of touching you. If he closes that gap, now he can touch you. So you always want to keep that. If the person has a weapon, now you have to spread the distance even more because stretch it out. Now he's going to be able to go beyond three feet. So now I have to, if I see a weapon, such, you know, you got to use your brain. You see if it's a stick that's going to add, you know, length to his attack, you want to then create the distance even more. So stick it out. You want to create distance even more if you see that the person has a weapon, especially a weapon that allows him to extend his reach towards you. Right? So now I'm going to have to extend it to five or six feet in order to stay in a safe range. So, the second thing is that after, like I said, he misses the opportunity to get away when the guy gets out with the bat, is the guy gets out with the bat and he comes to close proximity, he's, he, I don't know, he, he kind of acts like he's a police officer, a little bit talking about you're under arrest, and uh, let me see, empty your pockets. Right this second. Give me that phone. Why are you going to give me my phone? You're under arrest. Oh, yeah, you arrest me. You're a terrorist. For why? You're I'm a terrorist. a terrorist. Yeah, you're a terrorist. Yeah. Let's see what's in your pocket. Let's see Stay away from me. Let's see Stay what's away from me. Let's see what's in your pocket. Stay right? away from oh, me. You better, you better get the fuck out of here. Right? So, the next thing is I hear. He has the bat in one hand and he starts to point. And he's like, empty your pockets. So, as you know, as we as martial artists, this is, I love this. Right? This, we love somebody giving us a limb. Right? If you know what to do with this, this is, this is beautiful opportunity as a martial artist. So, the first thing, or rather the second thing, was that when he gets out, and he gets in within range, and he's like, empty your pockets, empty your pockets here. So here's one thing you can do, like I said, so if you miss that opportunity to run away when the guy first got out, when he comes with a weapon now, you have, you see that this is a weapon, so you're already, your alert should be on, on red alert. Because now he has a weapon, and he's approaching you with the weapon, you already know, and he ain't playing baseball, he, he didn't come to play baseball, right? You know that he's coming to do some harm, right? So, make sure that you see, right? So, so then, when he comes up in close proximity with the bat, and he starts pointing, I, first of all, he didn't show a badge, he didn't say, I'm a police officer, I'm not taking no chances. So the next thing is, when he comes this right here, what can I do here? You gotta watch out for the weapon, but right now, he's trying to blame your pocket. This is dangerous for me, I'm coming in, right? I'm coming in and getting him down. What you mean, what you, are you a police officer? Can I, do you have a badge? You know, even if he is, if he is, sorry, I didn't mean it, I, you know, I, I was scared, or whatever the case, now that, potentially that could get you in trouble, but your defense could be, hey, he came out, he didn't show his badge, you know, I, I, didn't, I, I wanted to be safe. Sorry, Mr. Officer. Okay, you can't take, you, you, gotta, you gotta defend, you gotta protect yourself, even if that's the case, you apologize, if it has to go to court or whatever, then you can just be like, you know, look, I thought he, I didn't know what he was, he didn't show me a badge, he had a bat, by the way. What police officer comes out of his car with a bat? So, you know, you could potentially, if, if it has to go to court, defend yourself. I'm not giving legal advice. I'm just giving the assumptions of what I would think would happen. Okay, so that, don't take that as legal advice, all right? <laughs> so, the next thing is like that. So, like I said, he comes in this range. He has a bat. You don't want to, don't be stupid, right? Don't be foolish and allow him to get away with this because still, he could, he could be pointing and then he could attack, right? Attack. Bam, you see? So while, I, while I'm being, while I'm trying to be nice and be like, oh, he's just pointing, he could be getting close, and then he can attack. So in other words, what I'm trying to tell you is be preemptive, right? Be preemptive, meaning if you see that it's an immediate threat, and he didn't, he didn't necessarily attack with the bat, but this is a dangerous situation. So in this situation, I'm going to be preemptive. I'm not going to wait for him to swing and then defend myself. To me, this is already a dangerous situation where I can't wait. So he comes up, he's pointing, like I said, I'm not going to wait. He comes up pointing, right, I'm going to get up in his face and, and do what I got to do ahead of time. That's a preemptive strike, but it's a justified preemptive, you know what I'm saying? You're justified to do that because he's already coming with a threatening uh, um, situation. So again, 
So you see that? And notice what I do. He comes up pointing and he has the bat. What am I doing? Right? Notice I go to the outside where the bat is at. Right? So that we, you know, I don't want to go towards the bat. Okay? So again, let's do that again. He's pointing. Here you got options. I can come in, strike the arm away here and get him down. Right? Get that arm down out the way. Right? If I have to, then I can cover the arm with the bat. Make sure from here. All right? Again, he's pointing from here. Once again, like I said, right? I could come in from here, or if I need to, or I can go for the back. Here, quickly cover the back if you want to do that one as well, right? You can get the back immediately out the way as well. See that one? While he's distracted, he's pointing. What you want, man? What? See that? Go right in there. See? Go right for the back immediately. Again, I'll slow it down. He's pointing. What, man? Look at that. See? What you here? Get out the way quickly. Look, cover the back. Cover the back. Boom. Here. Take the bat away. I would not. I wouldn't attack him with the bat, but just take it away. And now, at least you have the weapon, the threatening weapon. And then, of course, watch for something else. Because then he might have a gun. He might have a knife. So if you take it away, you know what are you doing, man? Which I, I'm, not, I'm nobody, yo. I'm from Colombia. I'm not no terrorist. I'm not from Colombia. I'm not even Arabic. What? You know. But at least keep the bat and watch. Because now that you took his weapon, he might have something else. He might have a gun. He may have a knife. He may have something, you know. So be, as you do that, notice I'm looking. What, man? Look, I'm from Colombia. You know? Yo, 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 I'm with my y'all. You know, right, man. If he's about to go for something, then maybe you, about, you might want to do so, right? If you see him reap, then I might want to, right? <laughs> but in the meantime, take it away. But do not attack because you don't want the, now the situation to reverse on you. Now because you attacked him with the bat. But take it away and watch. See what he does. If he's, if he's just standing there, cool. But if he reaches, you know, then you might want to do something. You see him reaching for something, it could be a gun, it could be a knife. You got to be preemptive because that's showing you that th that's, the, uh, that, that's the attack. Okay? So that's that. So that's the next one. Okay? Now from there, the next thing is this. Is that if you miss that opportunity, because in the video, these, these, all these opportunities were missed. And like I said, we can't fault the person because... You know, this is training. It, this is why self-defense training is important. So again, the opportunities that were missed was when he got out the car to get away. The second opportunity was when he came up and he's in and he's close range with a threatening weapon and he's telling the guy to empty his pockets. He's pointing down here to empty his pockets. That was the second opportunity missed. Then now the next opportunity after that is the, the gentleman with the camera who is the being the victim. He moves away and he's still holding the camera and the guy starts yelling. Now he's pointing to ISIS, he's yelling ISIS, terrorists, and the guy- Fuck out of here, Frenchie! Yeah, we'll be you better right. get the fuck out of here! We need terrorists! Man! Terrorists! Terrorists! We got terrorists here! We got French terrorists! Hey, stay away with me! We got terrorists! Help! Terrorists! Help! We got terrorists! We got terrorists! ISIS! ISIS! We got ISIS right here! Can... The guy is holding the camera and they're like at a distance. Right? And he's yelling all the stuff like that. So the next opportunity would be, while he's doing all that, just be like, yo, man, I, you know, and just get out of there. Right? You don't even have to stand. Like I said, it's not about the ego or any of that. If the guy's yelling, you got his, you got the camera, you filmed him just in case you need to tell the police, and that's it. Get out of there. Hold it, hold it, hold it like you're pointing. So while he, while he filmed it, all, that's all I need. I got his identity. That's it. I'm out of here. Get up, get out of there. Right? Just go ahead and... and now create the distance. Whether you got to run, run to your car, run back to the store, run back to the mall. That's all you got to do. So that was the next thing. Again, this is part of your self-defense. It doesn't always have to be you doing the technique. Sometimes it's just the way you operate. So just getting out of there while he's holding the back point talking about ISIS. Man, I'm out of here. I ain't ISIS. And just get out of there. Right? I'm already running to my car. Okay? So now the next thing is if you miss that opportunity, that's your third opportunity to get out of there. Was that once again the gentleman, the, oh, the gentleman, the guy with the uh, with the bat? He once again closes the gap, right? Let me open it, right? He once again closes the gap after he's yelling, "ISIS, ISIS, terrorist attack, uh, terrorist or whatever." He get he then gets closer to them. He gets closer to the guy again. So instead of when the guy was doing this yelling, he had, he had the chance to run away and get out of there. Just run away, just run away, get out of there. The guy has a bat. Forget about it. You ain't got to prove nothing. Just get up out of there. So he misses that opportunity, which was his third opportunity. So then the guy comes close, he gets in close proximity, talking about ISIS, terrorists, ISIS, and then he starts 
ready to attack. Right? He starts ready to attack. Matter of fact, I forgot there was one opportunity. But after the after the guy was pointing, there was a there was this is the third opportunity actually. This was the third uh, chance where uh, if he, if you didn't do nothing with the pointing, the guy then kind of like motions like a threatening like do a motion like a. Right, he, Stay away from pocket. me. Let's see what's in your pocket. Stay right? away from me. You better, you better get the fuck out of here, Frenchie. Stay away from me. You better get the fuck out of here. Just like, a, like, you know, like he's gonna hit him. So again, as a martial artist, as a self person who was studying self defense, that's also a, a sign that you gotta do something, right? Because I don't know, I don't know what this is. This might be he ready, he, he, you know, he's ready to hit me. So if I see it as a martial artist that you do that, that's showing me that you, you, another, that's an immediate threat to me, right? Because I don't know if, you, if you're just trying to scare me or whatever. So if I see that, I'm going in. I'm making a preemptive strike. So after he did the pointing, do the pointing. After he did the pointing, he then pulls back and threatens. Threat. Right? So either you're going to be scared or whatever, or you got to react to that. Like I said, I, as a martial artist, you should have reacted once he's already doing this pointing close to you like that. Right? You should have already did that because he already with the bat, which is a threatening thing. So if, like I said, if you miss that opportunity, the next thing is when he starts to threaten, right? Do the threat. So once I see that, I'm already in there, right? I'm closing the gap. Again, once, once I see that, go for the arm because that's where the bat has to go. So I'm in there. See, I'm blocking the arms. Look, look, look what I got here. I get in here, look at it. See that? Here, boom. Take the weapon and hold, right? Again, slow. So do the threat. So once I see that, once I see him back, that go like that, all right? Do it again. Once once he backs up like he's getting ready to swing, that's where you want to react. See, I'm right here. Get those arms because the arms is where the back swings through. So once he threatens, see that I'm on the arms right there. And from here, here, boom, and you take the weapon. Let's slow that down again. Slow it through the threat slowly. As soon as you see that, that's a threat. Again. That's when you want to close the gap. And again, your target is the arm because the arms is where the bat swings from. So he does it again. Once I see that, that's a threat. So I'm here, right? I'm right up on here. So from here, I'm up. My hands are right by his face too. That's the strap. From here, you get the hand strike, strike, whatever. Here, and then cover the weapon. See? Cover it, take it away, force it away. All right, let's do it from this side. In, threat, here, right there. From here, and take the weapon. Okay? So that's a real simple one. Alright? Then after that, like I said, if you miss that opportunity, that's when he then starts like walking, yelling, ISIS, terrorist, ISIS, terrorist, from here. So if you miss those opportunities, the next opportunity would be as he's pointing, pointing and doing that, that's when you want to run. Just get out of there. Right? You missed those other opportunities. You missed when he got out the car. Alright, so where were we? Alright, so um so yeah, so now so if you missed the opportunity when he got out the car with the bat, you missed the opportunity when he came close and he's pointing at you and telling you to empty your pockets. You missed the opportunity when he does the threat, when he motions like he's getting ready to hit you. You missed that opportunity. The next opportunity was where he then is after he does all that, he's talking and yelling that they're ISIS, pointing to yell at ISIS. Right? That's when he had, that's when he just be like, you know, I'm out of here. Just get out of here. Just run away, run to your car, run back to the mall, run back to the store. But whatever you do, that's your opportunity to get out of here. You missed that opportunity. The next one was then the guy kept doing it. He kept pointing with the back. Hold it up. Hold. He's pointing. So the next opportunity, once again, he once again is presenting me with a limb. Because he was doing just like he's out, he's pointing straight out. Right? And again, he showed, so far, like I said, you, you have so many opportunities because he, he gave you every right to, 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 to be preemptive because he's showing that he is an immediate danger and threat to you. See? So now, after all of that, he's still threatening. Keep it up. He, he has this one. So the next thing I would do is here. Either one, like I said, I would either run and run and get away. And if I see that he keeps coming, walk towards me. Right? Here. See that? Then I can get the weapon or whatever. But I got him subdued and down. Because what? He gave me a limb. Do it again. Pointing. Alright? He's giving me a limb. He's giving me something. So, I see it. What I'm going to do? 
get to the side. I want to get to the side. I want to go to the way. Where's the bat in this case? He's pointing, right? Here. Right there. Strike. Down. Pushing my shoulder against his arm and get him down. Then I can lock him and then secure the weapon from here. Right? I want, I want to go to the side where the bat is not at. And, and, but you can, you can, we can do that one as well. I'll show you that as well. So he's pointing here. So that is giving me a beautiful, giving me a perfect target. Because he's sticking it out there. Right? But that's why I go out here so that when he tries to swing, try to swing. Right? And let's try. We're going to do it in one motion. I want you to, you're going to point. When I take your arm, you're going to try to attack me with the bat. So I'm going to show you what, what, what happens if he tries to attack with the bat. Right? See that? Just keep your motion around, that circular motion, and you got him down. Right? Let's do it from this way. He's pointing. See that? Just keep your motion going and you can lock him down. Right? Alright, but now we just do a regular. He didn't, he didn't, but he didn't do that. I'm just giving you what, what happens, what could you do just in case. So he just points. Just point. So like I said, you have that opportunity here. So I see it, yo, look, no trouble. Boom, right to the outside. Strike, lock that arm down. Right? We can also come to the inside if we have to. He's pointing. He's pointing. He's not really, he's just holding the bat here. So what can I do from here? From here, once again, I come in and go right for the bat. Because I'm, I'm being preemptive. Again, come on, close it. He's pointing at me, ISIS, ISIS from here. Hit. Cover the weapon and here. See that? Right from here. Take his back from what? What you want, alright? Again, slow. So I'm giving you all the options you got. He's pointing, what can I do from here? Right? Here. To the side. Strike. Come around. Here. And you want to get the weapon eventually. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright? So those are some options you got. That's the finger point. So now if you miss this opportunity, his last opportunity was when the guy finally does attack, right? And from the video footage that we saw after the attack, it appears that the man had been hit in this area. So swing, it appears he must have been like this and he got hit because they showed footage of the victim afterwards and he was bruised up here. So obviously the guy must have swung and when he swung he was like, he went like this to probably protect his face and he got hit with the back here. So, if you missed the, all those opportunities, like we mentioned, he got out the car with the bat. That's when you could have ran away. He came out the car, he's this close pointing at you. You could have locked, you know, if you had techniques, you could lock him down because that's a threatening situation. You missed that one. He motions to, like he's going to hit you. Again, that's an immediate threat. You can move in from that one. Okay? Then after that, he's pointing, you have the opportunity to, like I showed you. So his last opportunity was when the guy finally does attack, right? When the guy finally does attack is after he's pointing, now he's walking up holding the bat, right? And then he starts swinging. And that's when the guy got hit, okay? So the opportunity from this point, move a little bit. The opportunity on this one is that after all of that, and he's holding the bat, right? He's getting ready to attack. That's when I'm going to move it. Now he's actually swinging the bat at me. Right, so what you want to do is you need to close the gap, right? Because remember, with a, a stick weapon, the danger is at a distance, right? Because all the power is down here, right? The closer you can get to the source of these, uh, the, the, the distance weapon, the, the stick or whatever it is, the less effect it has, right? That's why like in baseball, when you want to hit a home run, what do you do? When you want to hit the ball at a distance, you get it with the end of the bat. That's where, all, that's where a lot of the power is at. So a lot of times when you hit with the end of the bat, you're going to get a lot more power. If you hit, the closer you hit towards the source, which is the person, the less effect. So when you hit, when the ball gets hit right here, you usually get a foul ball, or the ball is short, it runs on the ground or something like that. It won't go that far because it hit with less power. So the same idea is in an attack. The further you're away, right, stick it up, the further you're away, the more danger. He had, this is where all the power is at, right? The closer I get in, the less effective he can do, because now he can't swing, see? He can't really do anything, at least with the weapon. So, as he's holding the bat, now he's walking up. As he's walking up dangerously, get ready to swing, 
That's when again I'm moving in. I want to get in close as I can. Right? Now if you see that you can't get in, swing. Now I want to get away. Right? If I see that if I see that I don't have the time to get in close, then I'm just gonna make I'm just gonna make distance and get out of it. Right? Or you can do this, swing, and then come in after it, right? Swing and then quickly come behind so that way he doesn't make his backtrack swing. Like so. Let's do it again slowly so I can get the distance and then he tries to come back, then I move it afterwards and then I do my thing. Right? Okay? Yeah. Okay? But like I said, from what I saw in the video, it appears that the attacker, he didn't really do like the full swing. He was more or less like doing that. It's ISIS! It's ISIS! <laughs> Stay away from me! Stay away from me! ISIS! Like the short, the short type of hits. So in a situation like that, do it. Boom! I'm in close. I get in close. Since he's not swinging all the way through, I get in close from here. Right? Because he's going, he's pulling back. Because he pulls back, pull back. Hey, I'm in there. Boom! Look at it, right in there. Bam! <clears throat> but at the same time, keeping the weapon under control. But I'm in close right there. Bah! See that? Here, bam, like so. Take the weapon, and I got it. Again, slow. He makes the motion, he's coming into attack. I'm in close right over here. Right in here, I want to stop his arm, you trap him. See that? Lock in, and try to trap the arm from here. Now, obviously, you're not going to stay here. Once I get here, boom, you need to hit your distractions. <laughs> See that? Boom. Scrape him. Strike him. Strike. Then I can take the weapon and twist over from here and now I got the weapon. Alright, let's do it from this side. He picks up the swing at me, he swings, boom, right in there. Okay, so you want to, again, your target is to get in close, stop the arms. From here, pop, right there. Look at your hands. Boom, boom. Then I can take and I got it. Alright? Okay. So like I said, those are just uh, a few pointers few techniques that you can use to hopefully uh, protect yourself if the situation should happen again, some other place, some other country, just little things to be aware of, all right? But the first, the first line of defense is your awareness. Your awareness of the situation, your awareness of the danger. That's your first, before you start doing any techniques, that's your first line of defense is your awareness. Because if you are aware of the situation of danger ahead of time, you can avoid it altogether. So like I said, he got, as soon as he got off the car with the bat, I don't have to, I know I, I know I have martial arts skills, but I don't have to stand there and say, oh yeah, oh you get out your car with your bat, yeah, what, what you, what you, you know what I mean? No. I see that, my first line of defense is let me get out of here. This guy has a weapon, he's crazy, I'm out of here. Like I said, if you missed that opportunity, I gave you steps on what you could do on each each, you know, each uh, step along the way, okay? So I hope you uh, can benefit from this. And uh, again, remember, we want to protect people. We want to give you the opportunity to defend yourself and not be a victim. All right? I'm out.